and welcome back to another video and also happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys are having a great day whether or not you celebrate Thanksgiving but because here in the States we do celebrate Thanksgiving at this time I will be doing the Thanksgiving tag. Woo! How appropriate, right? I know. Um, so I'm excited. I've never done this tag before. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get into it. The only thing I'm gonna quick say is that I just know that this tag is gonna make me super hungry and it's it's gonna be great just perfect I'm already hungry so the first prompt is bread and that is what is purely fluff and has no real plot line and for this one I chose thousandth floor by Katherine McGee I chose this one because back when I read it this summer I was like, oh my word, there is no point to this book other than just pure gossip. And pure gossip to me doesn't feel like a plot line because there wasn't a goal or objective that people were trying to reach. It was just like, this person said this thing, so then this happened because they said that. And you know, it was like, there was no plot. It was all like fluffy drama, gossip, like kind of thing like that. Um, so this is what I'm saying for bread. Uh, it's about these people who live in a tower and the higher in the tower you are, the higher your social status is and the more rich you are. Um, and that's all I can say. I mean, it just follows a group of friends who are mostly near the top of the tower and they're dumb and they don't communicate with each other, thus creating a bunch of drama and thus that's what the book is. So there's no real plot that is really prominent that I could find when reading this. So this is bread. The next question is, Turkey, what is a book that made you almost fall asleep or want to fall asleep? And for this one, I chose The Secret Garden uh, by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I chose this one because I kept wanting to fall asleep because it was very I don't know if it was like slow because it didn't seem that slow this was not my first time reading it however it was my first time finishing it and I don't know it just was like calm and cold the entire time or at least that's what it felt like to me which just was a great way to put me to sleep so this is my turkey I guess for the main part of the meal I'm just kind of like eh so turkey the third question is gravy. What book makes a whole series worth reading? And I'm kind of, I feel like this question is asking for a book that's not the first book in a series. However, for me, I always tend to enjoy the first book and I haven't finished as many series as I've started, but I will do, I will do a book that I've read the entire series for. However, I only own the first one and that's Uglies by Scott Westerfield. Um, I loved this series. I think Pretties was probably my favorite. Like, I loved Uglies, um, but I also just really enjoyed Pretties, and then after that I felt like the series was still good, but it just wasn't, like, as good. But I, so I only have the first one. I only have Uglies, which is why I'm showing it, but I think Pretties was my favorite, and that makes the whole series worth reading. And this, it takes place in a dystopian society where you are considered ugly until you go through the operation to make you pretty. And once you're pretty, you go off to a place and you just be happy and party and live your good life all the time. And as you can tell, with most dystopians, someone's always like, mm, nah, this is not right. I am losing friends. This is not how life is supposed to be. I'm going to run away, find people who agree with me and rise up against uh, societal norms. So that's the Ugly series and I think this can be a great commentary on where our society is at in terms of prioritizing uh, people who have attractive features um, or you know just like stuff like that where it's like come on people everyone's beautiful in their own way why can't we all just agree to that? Um, so I would say the second book in the series Pretties is my gravy then if I am slightly displaced, it's because I have to stand up to get this next book and that's not my favorite thing to do. But the next question, <laughs> great job Laura. The next question is stuffing and that is what book is stuffed full of action scenes? Love that pun, thank you very much. And for this, I chose Criminal by Tara Ellen McVoy. McVoy, I can say that. 
I read this book quite a while ago, like years ago, but it's basically this girl is dating this guy who she loves and then he kind of drags her into a crime which may or may not end in murder and so when she is put on trial she's like I love him too much I'm not going to testify or anything but then she starts to learn things about her boyfriend that makes her kind of go hmm maybe this was not the best idea for me um, and so I enjoyed this book quite a bit and I definitely it definitely fits the prompt of stuffing because it you know you start off with the crime and then um, go into the court and like it's just jammed full of um, action scenes and very important scenes and it's only a, it's a pretty short book too so like it's jam packed in here so this is my stuffing the next one are the mashed potatoes what book looked good but then wasn't what are you trying to say about mashed potatoes here people but the book I chose for that is The Winner's Curse, and this is by Marie Rutkowski. I can never say her name. I'm so sorry. Um, this book looked so good. I loved the cover. I thought the premise was kind of interesting, and then it just really fell flat. It is the first in a series, and I did end up reading the second book, and I can't remember if I read the third book, but I know I didn't finish the series, and I know I'm not going to, because I tried, I tried so hard, and it just couldn't do it for me, whether it was the romance just refusing to work or be, like, a decent thing, or just the whole world of, like, there are the slaves and the people who conquered them to make them slaves, and now the daughter of the general uh, ends up being, like, the key. I don't... It was so weird, just because she found a slave who she liked and then fell in love with and then he started an uprising and then they're like, I love you but I can't be with you because we're on opposite sides. But then she's like, but I'm the representative of the slaves to my people and then she refuses to... It's, it's like, girl, what are you doing? Main character, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop. It was very frustrating for me because she couldn't choose or make any decisions and then she made all the wrong decisions and it was just... She had no spine. She's too much like me. She has no spine. Um, so this is my mashed potatoes where I thought it looked good and then I read it and I was like, hmm. Which I would disagree with, with mashed potatoes in real life. My poppy makes the best dang mashed potatoes you will ever eat. And I will stay true to that. Moving on to Cranberries. What book had the sweetest romance? And if you've been following my channel, you know, I'm not a fan of romances, like, at all. <laughs> But there is one romance that I read in February when I was challenging myself to read all romance that I actually loved, I adored, I fell in love with it. I loved this romance and so I'm going to talk about it yet again. Red, White, and Royal Blue. Yep, I absolutely adored this book. The, the romance was great, the situation was great. Basically, the first... The, the son of the female president of the United States falls in love with the Prince of Wales and it's adorable. But it's kind of an enemies to lovers because he starts off being like, oh, I don't like that guy. He's like such a prim proper, like, eh. And then they are the cutest couple and I love it very much. So that would definitely have to be my cranberries. It's the sweetest romance because it's the romance that I read this year that I actually enjoyed. Surprise, surprise, right? I know. Like, who would think that the romance I actually enjoyed would fit the prompt of what romance did you enjoy? <laughs> We're doing great this Thanksgiving, aren't we? I am so hungry now. Next up is Corn. What is the corniest book you read? Again, I love these Thanksgiving puns here. This is absolutely amazing. And my answer to this one would be actually an entire series, and that is the Wolves of Mercy Falls series. Again, I read this in February because it is very heavily romance. I think my problem is that I read it at the exact same time I read Twilight. Like, I literally went back and forth on the books. I read Twilight, and then the first of the Wolves of Mercy Falls, and then I read the second book of Twilight, and then the second book of Wo Wolves of Mercy Falls. And they were like the exact same plotline. Literally the only difference was that in, 
in Twilight there is, you know, that class, the everyone knows the love triangle between like Bella and Edward and um, Jacob and so there are vampires and werewolves in Mercy Falls it was really just werewolves and there wasn't as much of a love triangle but like everything else was the same everything else was the same she's got her wolf she can't tell anyone and everyone's like well, what's going on with you and she's like you don't know I'm in love with a werewolf and it, it just it's so corny so it fits this front perfectly because it was so corny. <laughs> or at least I found it to be, but that's also because I find Twilight, I admire Twilight for what it is, for shaping like the romance genre and like being such a huge impact on people. And I can appreciate other people liking it, but I didn't like it. And so then when I read another series that was exactly like it, that just made it corny. Instead of made it, making it good or like turning a corner on a genre like Twilight did, it was corny instead. Uh, because it wasn't very original. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, we're allowed to move on to the next question now. Green Bean! What book is too long and needs to be shortened? Awesome. Um, for that, I would say Kill the Queen by Jennifer Estep. Um, I felt like this was a very good book, but it was pretty long for what all happened in the book. Like, it definitely could have gone faster, and I started the next book in the series, uh, crush the prince and um, I put it down because it was too slow and I felt like it could be shortened um, yeah so basically she's like 26 or something in line something crazy like that until people murder everyone else in her family and then next thing she knows she's in line to be queen of the kingdom however it is not safe and she really doesn't know what she's doing so she runs away to join a gladiator troop until she's ready to reclaim her spot on the throne yeah apparently there's this thing between like winter queens and summer queens and how their rules are going to be different and I felt like that was such a fascinating concept that we just never got to because this book was so long and so now we're gonna have to explore in the next book which I don't feel like reading because it looks too long for how slow it was going at the beginning so I would like to continue with the series I just when I tried I was very unmotivated too and I don't know if it was just the wrong time or what but this book I think would definitely be a lot better if it was shortened and taken out quite a bit of just like random fluff. So, green beans. Now we're moving on to pumpkin pie, which side note, I love pumpkin pie. Um, and the prompt for that one is what book do you read to get out of a reading slump? This one is a hard one for me because I, duh, I kind of don't have a book to get me out of a reading slump. I prefer just reading a book that I'm interested in like I don't generally like rereading and so there isn't like a book per se but at the same time if I want to read something familiar or get out of a reading slump I'm most likely to choose Wither um, by Lauren Stefano, first in the Chemical Garden trilogy however I never read the full book that's why I'm not even pulling it off my shelf right there because I never read the full book, I'll read like the first two chapters and I'm fine and then I move on to a different book. Like it's, I don't get into a slump where I need to read something that I know I'll enjoy, it's I need to move on to a book that I think I'll enjoy more and so I, I'm always looking for new books <laughs> and that's how I get out of my reading slumps is when I finally find the book that I am going to enjoy a lot, that'll get me out because reading something I've already read will not get me out of a slump because I've already read it. <laughs> I, I apparently am so picky that I need something new in order to get me out of a reading slump and so it better be good otherwise I'm gonna be stuck there for a while. <laughs> so kind of hard to answer this one when that's who I am. The last question on this tag is actually dog or cat and it is basically like what's your favorite Thanksgiving food that you would steal from the table? Personally, I adore the green bean casserole. Um, that has been my favorite so for so many years, but I don't want to say that Kill the Queen, the book that I associated with green bean casserole, would be my favorite book. So I decided what I'm going to do is that my other favorite food in Thanksgiving uh, is actually another dessert that I make sure my family makes every year, 
we call them angel cloud cookies, but really they're just like French meringues. They're not like flavored in any fancy way. We don't add like nuts or chocolate chips or anything. It's really just like egg whites, beaten stiff, put on a tray, cooked in the oven, the end. They're so crumbly, so sweet. I could eat all of them. I could eat them until I get sick and then I will eat some more. And so I decided that even though green bean casserole is my favorite dish, I'm gonna go with this dessert. Which again, I don't know why my family calls them angel cloud cookies. Like, we're French. Why don't we call them French meringues? But no, they're angel cloud cookies. And so because they are very light and fluffy, I decided to choose a book to represent this dessert. Uh, even though it wasn't quite the prompt, I'm twisting it just a little bit. Um, and I'm going with the Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. It's a very light and fluffy book that just makes you smile. Um, it's about this girl who uh, finds out how to, or like, she kind of becomes an apprentice for making tea um, off of the leaves on the dragons on their, their horns and their bodies, and so you just make tea with them. And then she meets another girl, and they kind of have like a cute little crushy thing, but like, it's still very wholesome, but like, it's also LGBTQIA plus community friendly, which is super cool. Um, so yeah, it's just like a light, fluffy little read to go with my light and fluffy um, angel cloud cookies. So, there it is! Thank you so much for watching this video. This video was originally created by Becca and Erica over at Fangirl City. Um, so I will link their original video down below so you can go and watch it. Um, because it is a tag, I did not get tagged. I just felt like doing it because it's Thanksgiving. Um, but if you want to do it, feel free to do it. Consider this me tagging you. Um, but if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I will be posting videos every Thursday, even on holidays such as Thanksgiving. And I believe Christmas Eve is on a Thursday this year, so there will definitely be videos then too. So yeah, I post every Thursday. Subscribe, hit the bell to get the notification of when I post on Thursdays and leave a comment down below with like what's your favorite thanksgiving book or what book makes you think of thanksgiving or even answering some of these prompts that would be really fun to just kind of read through and get book recommendations so until next time i will see you guys later and i wish you all a happy reading